Good afternoon. Um, I think we can slowly get started with our panel for today. Um, my name is Florian Bieber. I will be the moderator of this panel. I'm a professor for Southeast European history and politics at the University of Graz and the coordinator of the Balkans and Europe Policy Advisory Group. Um, this is our uh, part of the panel in part of the you know, civil society forum in the context of the uh, Berlin process uh, conference taking place also today. And the topic of the panel is reconciliation, social dialogue, and regional confidence building. And we have uh, a really excellent panel for today of both uh, a presentation uh, of the key recommendations from the civil society dialogue by Branka Vierda, who is the program coordinator of the justice program uh, and reconciliation program of the Youth Initiative for Human Rights in Croatia. And then we have uh, three uh, speakers who can reflect on those, uh, those recommendations and suggestions. Uh, Gordana Tomic, who is the Minister for Human and Minority Rights and Social Dialogue in Serbia. Donika gavala Schwarz, the Minister of Foreign Affairs and Diaspora in Kosovo. And Albert Hani, the Secretary General for the Regional Youth Cooperation Office, who will uh, join us shortly. Um, and of course, this is supposed to be an interactive event, so you're all able to ask questions. Uh, you can do this in two ways. You can raise your hand and you can ask a question uh, via audio. Um, and I'm now glad to also welcome Albertani, who has joined us now. Um, and, uh, and as well as uh, ask questions in the Q&A uh, function. So the Q&A is open throughout the whole um, session. We have one hour, so we have to be very tight with our time management, so I'll ask everybody also the question ask us to be brief in their questions, not overly complicated and focused on the topic uh, of our panel. Um, and I will be posing those questions from the Q&A to our panelists. Um, questions which uh, people would like to ask live, uh, I will uh, give a floor to them in due course. So this roughly um, to the procedures and without further ado, I'll hand over to Branka to hear what are the key suggestions which came out of the discussions in the Civil Society Forum. So please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, Florian. Good day, everyone. It's uh, really an honor to be here. Uh, thank you for the, for the invitation. So um, the recommendations forum and group which uh, discussed issues regarding legacies of the past and regional confidence building were structured in three pillars. First pillar addressed CSOs and think tanks from the Western Balkans. Since all the participants were very much aware of the complexity and length of peace building and trust processes for post-conflict societies, recommendations for CSOs and think tanks contributions were firstly to be persistent in their work and to develop multidisciplinary cooperation in their respective peace building efforts. Adding new types of partners, such as academic institutions, is one of the suggestions. The availability of facts and data are a necessary condition for strong and relevant advocacy and base for the truth-seeking process. During the discussion for creating the second pillar recommendations for Western Balkans governments, it was pointed out that development of sustainable peace is a process which needs to include national as well as regional level of efforts, which should be mutually inclusive. Moreover, when we talk about building regional confidence, we need to talk about the regional perspective, which includes Croatia, Albania, Slovenia as well. One of the ways on how to achieve common goals based on international human rights standards is to create a multilateral public policies and reconciliation agendas, which will comprehensively represent a recognition of the importance and a strong commitment to fostering social development through values of peace and responsible dealing with the past. Also, we found very relevant the need for strong support of critical journalism in respective countries in providing the public with uncensored information about atrocities and human rights violations that occurred during recent conflicts in the region. Finally, the working group during the forum created recommendations for the EU and its member states, emphasizing that they should encompass transitional and restorative justice mechanisms in the EU policies of conditionality towards candidate states. Working group pointed to the relevance of imposing zero tolerance for hate speech and attacks on peace activists and the media, 
and providing targeted grants for cross-border and regional programs to support joint reconciliation and peace building activities. For the conclusion, very important recommendation is to include non-judicial dimensions of transitional justice, such as reparations, true seeking and memorialization during the monitoring period in conjunction with criminal justice measures. It is crucial that the peace building process and responsible dealing with the past is followed by a concrete, sincere, active and effective push by national institutions to truly recognize and develop public policies oriented toward building sustainable peace. Thank you. Great, Branka, thank you so much for your uh, rec reporting on the recommendations. Um, and now I would like to give all of our uh, other panelists a brief chance to pick up on some of the themes uh, and recommendations and respond. So um, I would go in the order that, as noted in the program and give a floor to Gordon Nachomich. So please, Gordon, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, as brief as I can be, I will share with you something what uh, we have been sharing in second ministerial meeting on Roma inclusion in Sarajevo, but also in PRESPA digital forum recently on Ohrid, uh, just uh, at the end of the weekend. And that is that uh, in no text without the context, what we live in this region is uh, more often just absence of war than building peace. And the absence of war is good if you compare it with war, but it's not good if you just are stuck in absence of war because that is connected with transition of hate. And in that context, you should uh, have strategies for peace building in the field because you know, governments can sign agreements, uh, contracts, whatever, but only people in the field can really make peace. And we are not there yet. Uh, and uh, if with position of hate, we need uh, a, a huge dialogue uh, where uh, civil society is indispensable because they know how to fight um, that transition of hate much better than politicians or governments do. So that's from my perspective is context. And the tool for maybe speed up the processes that are good in that context, absence of war and transition of hate, and trying to resolve each one another's issue on the account of each other instead of working together is to talk about something that, for example, women and Roma people know very well, and that's patronizing. You know, there is a phrase coined, mansplaining. For all my life, I was listening to, to men telling me uh, about the things that I know much better and telling me what to do and how to behave and what is my role. And the same things happen with non-Roma explaining. And I think there is a resemblance of that process in uh, trying to impose a peace uh, without really original effort put by, by all the governments, all the uh, state or non-state actors in, 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 uh, in, with the goal to have an ownership of peace building in, in, in the region. Um, and uh, the, the, the second thing uh, that we should work on, from my perspective, except that patronizing, is um, to really start a dialogue on uh, what, on the, in this dialogue, we will never mention to make a dialogue possible. As the first phase that I call non agenda issues. And then, as dialogue goes, to introduce those issues from non-agenda that would enable the space of people who can't very often stand each other, uh, really can sit in, in the same room with, with CEOs, with, with citizen associates, with whoever they feel accountable that they belong to any government and, and do their job. And that is uh, building confidence. And that is sharing the same picture of the future of this region in five, seven, ten years, three years, whenever. Uh, that is something what I shared in Prespa Forum, and that is that my plea is to everyone in the region that the famous speech that Martin Luther King shared with us did, that did not start with, I have a nightmare, but I have a dream. We should be dream builders. However, there is a lack of trust between 
government and CEOs and uh, um, governments uh, mutually among themselves and small alliances, etc., etc. But the process of transforming absence of war in living, building peace process is inevitable. The process of decreasing the transition of hate from generation to generation is something that is common task for everyone living in this re region. And sharing the dream of this region in 2030 and uh, pushing for ownership with simple question, why anyone from Berlin or, or Netherlands or America, why anyone from there know better how my kids should live in 2030? Why don't we um, imagine the, 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 the life in Southeast Europe, in Western Balkans, in the 10 or, or, or nine years from now? This is something what I deeply believe in that is possible. This is something what our ministry is tool for. However, it is hard. However, there are a lot of non-believers around, but we will never give up because the alternative is that we just do as we've been doing for decades and hundreds of years, so the outcome will be the same. We want a different outcome for this region that is uh, European, uh, non-hating environment, accountability of the politicians, dialogue as, as a process that nobody really likes, but is the only tool for building up democracy in our region. Okay, thank you very much, Gordon. Uh, less West splaining, I guess, would be the term um, um, uh, instead of mansplaining and non Roma splaining, um, as well as more dialogue in the region. Um, even when it's difficult, I guess the I had a dream reference also means it's sort of a future oriented uh, dialogue. So let's hear now from uh, Donika Gervala Schwarz uh, for your response to the recommendations made um, by Branka. Please, the floor is yours. Please just unmute yourself. Yes, that's the. My main recommendation. Um, from the recommendations, um, you see very clear that two things are important in the Western Balkans. First of all, the reconciliation. But reconciliation means starting finally to talk about the truth and on the basis of the truth to start the reconciliation process. Uh, when I take as an example the uh, Balkan Youth Exchange uh, that is built along the example of the French German exchange that started 18 years after the end of the Second World War. So before that, society, civil society, churches, series of local partnerships, youth organizations, and many others built the trust. The trust has been built on facts, not on false narratives and lies. There's was, there was no hate speech against any other group, just the contrary. Reconciliation has to be based on truth. Even if the truth might be inconvenient, it is still the truth. And facing the truth, reconciliations become much easy, much more easy. Because every conciliation based or on failed narratives or even lies cannot work. There is no example anyway in Europe or in the world where they would work. So my appeal today based on the recommendations is let's work on reconciliation. Yes, let's work full scale on that. And yes, let's work on talking the truth. That is what Chancellor Merkel said yesterday about the Western Balkans that that it is necessary to talk about that what happened. She knows from her own nation's experience it works. The German reconciliation efforts has been a huge success. So we should not neglect this lessons of that huge success story. Uh, instead, uh, we should start to work on that. Okay. Thank you very much. I think this is uh, picking up an important recommendation about uh, how to deal with hate speech, but also how to actually give uh, the looking, it's the, there's the looking forward and the looking backwards. I mean, lo looking backwards in a particular way, which I think is, is, is an important question. Um, so with that, I would give the floor to Albert, uh, Albert Hani to uh, uh, reflect from the perspective of RICO and the work they've been doing over the last years. Thank you very much, uh, Florian. I'm really happy to hear the recommendations, uh, focusing also on some of the uh, taboo topics, let's say, 
as uh, transitional justice, but also a sensitive topics that deserves to be tackled in this period of uh, reconciliation in the region. The region deserves to provide the uh, youth a, the dream that was mentioned by um, Mrs. Gordana, a dream for a peaceful region that is in fact freed from all types of ethnocentrism, nationalism, and freed from stereotypes and, uh, and prejudices. This is what uh, youth are requesting all over the, 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 the region in all the processes that are uh, related to them. Uh, we have, as RICO, a great responsibility in front of us, uh, the responsibility actually of not disappointing young people by missing chances and uh, repeating the same mistakes as we have done in the past. Therefore, we uh, appreciate that uh, your recommendations uh, uh, focus also, as I said, on the transitional justice, but also in the dealing with the past. Our latest researches show that um, youth are, are uh, in fact seeing their future outside of the Western Balkans. 52%, uh, they really want, they really want in a way to show that uh, are, they are ready to vote with their, with their feet. It also show, our researches show that um, uh, there are low um, rates of youth invo involvement in decision-making processes. And therefore, I'm glad that you work on, on the issues of communication and, and hate speech as well I, uh, as well as involving on the involving the the youth low trust of uh, young people in governments and civil society is very uh, i mean it is very low the trust in, in government and civil society but also young people are showing their hopes for um, better regional relations and that's why uh, uh, I'm glad that this forum is, is bringing together all the key st stakeholders that are responsible for making a better regional uh, relations and address, of course, the needs and desires of the, of the youth. So as RICO, we are welcoming all the recommendations and uh, uh, hoping to hear them in the today's uh, summit uh, that will happen later in the in the afternoon. Otherwise, um, we it, it, let me just use this opportunity and say that it's it's uh, the fifth birthday of RICO, and we are happy to announce that uh, we've been uh, successful in in uh, providing ten thousand more than ten thousand exchanges for youth, and we supported uh, over three hundred uh, secondary schools and civil society organizations with over three million euro. Uh, not just an investment coming from the from the governments of Western Balkans, but also with their willingness. Uh, the, this shows symbolically the willingness that uh, the governments are ready to move forwards in terms of reconciliation and peace. That, that is also the key word in this, uh, in this uh, forum. Therefore, I let for, for the end, let me uh, use this opportunity to appeal to all the countries of Western Balkans to uh, ensure that these key recommendations that you have uh, provided will be implemented smoothly. Thank you very much, Florian, and all the others. Great, thank you very much. Um, I would uh, take it maybe back to Branka. Maybe you can also, because uh, we've looked at the overall picture, uh, let's maybe see what concrete measures could be done uh, across the region from your side in the discussions to deal with issues of um, you know, dealing with the past, hate speech, uh, ensuring a dialogue, a constructive social dialogue between the societies. So, so there, I think, would be appreciate to get some ideas and then I can ask uh, the other participants to, to respond and see also what ideas they might have of how to actually put those uh, overall challenges into practice in the coming years. So Branka, why don't you go ahead? Thank you, Thank you Florian. Uh, oh, first of all, and first what comes to my mind is support to establishing RECON. That is something that uh, is um, uh, I believe all of us who work in uh, civil societies through from all uh, the region, um, establishing RECOM and existing RECOM uh, is something that could really help uh, to provide uh, not just uh, dialogue, but um, um, for for whole for all the mechanisms of uh, transitional justice to be to be uh, seen and to be heard. That kind of uh, truth commission is something that would be um, very, um, very useful for um, 
for the, this region to, to maybe, maybe not to say to start, but to gain uh, um, reconciliation. As uh, Ms. Schwartz said, uh, reconciliation must be built on truth, and we have to uh, have we have to know the, the, the truth in order to gain uh, reconciliation. Um, reconciliation agendas, which will provide not just uh, um, a set of laws, but uh, measures uh, which are included in um, wider transitional justice programs is something that uh, all the governments um, can do. And that is something that then um, has an opportunity to be uh, followed in our respective countries. So this, for, for these, these, these two um, so to say measures, acts are something that can be done. And as you can see, I'm mentioning all the, the regional perspective because I, I honestly believe if we have only exclusively national measures, then we, we, we cannot succeed in uh, reconciliation in the, the, the wider sense, in a, in a regional sense. And that is something that I, I truly believe it's a basic condition in order to gain um, a peace building trust process and reconciliation process. Thank you, Branka. Um, and I would go to, to Gordon, uh, um, to also ask you that question in a certain way specifically, is a RECOM on the agenda? Is this something which can be achieved with uh, by the with support of the Serbian government? It's been on the agenda for a long time, and uh, is when will when will its time come? And I would also bring in the, the question which uh, which Visa Jambazi asked. I mean, in a certain way, what measures can governments do in the case of Serbia to deal with the past? I mean, to investigate past war crimes from the 1990s. The ICTY has come to its end, so that tool is no longer available to look at, at, at past crimes. So what can, you know, besides the support for RECOM, what, what can be done in Serbia also to, to look at uh, the past in a, in, a, in a critical, reflective way? And I guess the same question we can ask across the region, of course, but Gordana, why don't you go ahead with that? Well, ICTY was, uh, from my perspective, back in the late 90s, a tool for traditional justice for uh, creating a space where we could talk on uh, facts from verdicts, mm. from what has happened in that court. And unfortunately, it didn't happen. And ICTY actually, uh, maybe the, the, the word is, is blunt, that we failed to use uh, the ICTY work as a tool for, uh, for reconciliation. It just didn't work. And uh, if you try to, to introduce what has happened in that court, uh, whoever was indicted, uh, 46 from uh, extradite from Serbia or from Croatia or from Bosnia, or now with special chamber for Kosovo, um, you will only have a success in interpretation and different interpretation of the facts and very little, if any, uh, dialogue on what has happened in ICTY. And um, uh, that is something uh, hard to say, but comparing to uh, domestic judiciary that uh, had very few cases uh, with, with, uh, with uh, justice given and uh, a more unsolved uh, processes where you don't know who committed war crime or uh, the, 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 the investigation isn't over yet. Uh, the truth about what has happened with the judiciary, whether ICTY or domestically, is that we learned how deep the gap between rule of law and justice can be. And I'm not sure that there is a sense of justice given for victims. And I'm not sure that it will happen after the special chamber ends its work, but I don't think that it should prevent us uh, to, to have a dialogue on, on data that are applicable um, and can be, uh, can be an issue uh, for us regionally. The final goal, uh, you know, to maybe this is idealistic what I'm sharing with you, but that's who I am. Uh, with a, a common monument, a mark somewhere in the region, 
for all those human beings for, who, who died, uh, how, however the, the horrible way to die was, just to gather around uh, uh, about them being dead. Maybe that will never happen, but I will never stop believing that we are capable of, of coping with the past if we are uh, decisive in, uh, in creating a different future. If we are not having a strong decision to have a different future than uh, compared to our past, then it will happen and we all know the outcome. I don't believe that it is high probability. So uh, I will continue to, to fight for what I, what I deeply believe in that that are people, they are not uh, nationality, they are victims. Mm. And whoever committed that crime, committed that crime and personally is responsible. And uh, that is the space for the governments, for the civil society, for association, for the association with the missing persons that is still a living pain in, in this region, to talk about what is going to happen next. That is, um, Reconciliate that future oriented reconciliation that I think is possible. So, I mean, specifically, do you see uh, RECOM as being an, uh, an, an initiative which, which uh, could enjoy the support of the Serbian government to become a reality? This is, I think, you know, the most concrete uh, suggestion on the table for uh, dealing with exactly the problems you've mentioned, namely the issue that the, the, the courts. Uh, cannot uh, cannot do the job of being finishing the job of transitional justice. So is Recom, and so the only regional initiative we really have on the paper is Recom. So is this something which you see could um, uh, gather the support uh, on the Serbian side um, to 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 be established finally as as a process? Um, I had an idea, still have, and working on it. I think that we all together. Uh, Relating to adopting a regional rights, regional charter on human rights that will include uh, all participants, including uh, RECOM, because uh, this is something what we have to do regionally, like like uh, that you know, missing persons should be uh, problems that, that should be resolved based on the, uh, on the coordinates that the person was last seen alive not belonging to anyone or being a victim of someone already convicted. So I would like to see uh, what, what RECOM has as a database and what they have as an, an excellent work throughout the years, uh, not just uh, welcomed by the government, but being a foundation for the follow-up. So for something what the government in the region can do on on, uh, on 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 regional cooperation uh, in in uh, in giving uh, space for some sense of justice, uh, implementing rule of law. And I know how hard it is. And I know how very few will say that yeah, this is this is justice accomplished. It will never be. But that is not not the reason that we should stop. Just just to give an example. Uh, I also uh, proposed and will fight for it that the government's work on regional charter on that anti-gypsism, because these tragedies, these uh, people who are human beings who are patronized or or seen just as the victims of some ethnic origin, is, is is we share that, and if we share them, then we should share uh, a common effort to uh, to resolve. Uh, the problems that their families still have, the pain, the, the, the sense of loss that they share, because that's a human thing to do. And I think the Recom should, as other organizations, should be the part of it. But we have to take possibility as a government. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, Donika gavala schwartz can you also maybe see how do you see Kosovo's participation in RECOM? Is this something which is a tool uh, for what you were looking at is, is talking about uh, what, you know, the truth, finding the truth uh, 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 and engaging in transitional justice mechanisms uh, regarding it? Is this something where which you would support and your government would support? 
Uh, I'm sorry, you're muted again. <laughs> right. Regional initiatives are really very welcomed um, above all in our region in the Western Balkans. Um, and uh, yes, we need the reconciliation. We should not stick to the past and should go should look uh, in the future. But we should not forget that between the past and the future is the presence. And maybe I tell you now something about the presence of the country in which uh, I live. Um, I have a, a vice president of the parliament who has been 13 years old, who is now a woman and uh, who has um, faced the killing of her mother, her sister, brother, grandmother, uh, aunt and cousins. And she was saved with, uh, brought to the hospital with 16 bullets in her body. Now she is the vice president of Kosovo and in the present, not in the past, she asks everybody together with us for justice. Um, we have uh, mothers waiting for the missing persons just to have a place where they can put flowers. So um, that's not an interpretation, that's not history, but that's the presence of our people every day. That's why it's so important, so really important. First, to talk tough about the facts, and second, to make the, the steps that are needed just to build the bridge between the past and the future. What is the presence? It depends on how we behave today, if the reconciliation will be successful. And not that much what happened in the past, because the past we cannot change, but we can change the presence. Every one of us can, can change our behavior now. We have a neighbor who has committed four, who has started four wars in the region in Bosnia and Kosovo committed genocide. So it's very important to accept the truth and just to give the victims the feeling that they are, they are being understood and that it's not a question of interpretation, but of the reality that happened uh, years ago. What is apologizing uh, important? Because it gives in the present the feeling that we can go together in the future. As long as this does not uh, happen, it will be uh, the same uh, story every year. Thank you. So uh, do, that, do I take, I mean, uh, Besides the point you've raised as well, do I take your the, the, your statement that's also saying that you, that you uh, and the Kosovo government would uh, or consider endorsing Recom? Because again, this is the the uh, as I've said the regional proposal from civil society for years to to actually engage in a, in a, in a truth finding uh, process, which would be regional and which would help uh, bring about some kind of transitional justice. I think. Uh, so, so is, is is this how I can see your 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 statement as, as that this might be something you you uh, your government supports and considers? As far as we are talking about regional uh, cooperation, uh, we support uh, this and the other initiatives when Kosovo is considered as being part equal part of the initiatives. When we look at the at the experience until now. Um, I must say that the, the experience is not that, um, how to say, not that, uh, makes me not that optimistic because still in the region, uh, there are the tendencies to block each other on the way uh, we should go together. So um, I, at the same time, maybe um, uh, with my limited English, um, I should um, tell you about the initiatives that our government uh, will start in the country itself, not only regional, just to make uh, sure that uh, Albanian and non-Albanian Kosovars have a better cooperation, have better contacts, have better have uh, common actions they are taking so that the civil society in the country and regional, and there I see Recon too, um, should uh, prevent for above all for young people the future that they uh, want to build together with the others okay thank you uh, albert i don't know if uh, recom has figured on the discussions of of rico or how do you see because i'm sure you have uh, of course uh, 
engaged and are aware of RECOM. So maybe you can say as of how you see maybe how these initiatives could interlock. I know RICO is more about exchange and a certain way future look forward looking, but uh, do you have a sense of how this kind of looking backwards can interlink um, uh, like a piece of puzzle you have on your logo um, with, uh, with the work RICO does? Yeah, thank you, Florian. I mean, uh, dealing with the past, it is one of our core topics, topics that actually derives from the needs and uh, and desires of, of the youth. As I mentioned previously, youth are, are waiting from us to see changes, and those changes really need to be uh, tackled seriously. I like uh, the recommendation to regionalize this type of, uh, of, uh, of measures, as well as uh, I would add here to uh, the expectation to to see more synergies in this in all regional initiatives and to come up with even even better more creative uh, measures and and tools that in fact are, are are working seriously on the on the aspect of recon reconciliation and uh, uh, peace in in the region we are in uh, in uh, need to to uh, provide space to to youth to see their future in fact in the region. Therefore, for these initiatives, I would welcome all the courage needed uh, to overcome all the barriers from the past and work literally for a better future of the youth and work for the uh, better region. As our motto is already saying, a better region starts with youth. Please also don't forget in these aspects uh, the, uh, the, the concept of, of youth and youth in, in general. Thank you very much, uh, Florian, and I will have to leave because I need to go to the other conference. Yes, thank you. Thank you for your contribution, Albert, and, and joining us despite, I know you have to go to the summit itself. So, so uh, good luck with that. Um, and let's go back to Branka because I mean, you had other suggestions as well. I mean, one of the topics you've picked up, I mean, and you feel free to add anything else, but one thing I've noticed, and which of course we all know is a problem in a number of countries in the region is hate speech, um, you know, kind of often very uh, aggressive speech against uh, particular groups in society. Um, is this something also where you have uh, explored more specific suggestions, which I can, which we, you can communicate to the two uh, ministers present uh, for for consideration by the governments? Thank you, Florian. Yes, so we we talked a lot about uh, hate speech in our respective countries, but maybe something to to, to say before I say about uh, hate speech. Um, I must point, um, although I'm sure all of us here and uh, uh, respective audience knows that, but I think that is, it is relevant to, to, to say it and to, to, to mention it again, that the governments bear biggest burden on responsible dealing with the past processes. NGOs are uh, uh, in that sense partners and NGOs have limited capacity organizational uh, with funding and so on and so on. So we are uh, human rights uh, watchdogs, we are advocators, but we cannot make serious changes in, 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 our, in our countries. Um, RAICO, uh, Franco-German Youth Office are great example is how to make some progress when uh, states and governments are really interested in make um, a serious change in order to make um, um, exchange for youth exchange, for example, to make it to make it happen. And how uh, and what is the relevance uh, of uh, this kind of um, um, measures, this kind of uh, actions uh, to provide young people to go uh, to 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 uh, to to. to Mm, go to to, to um, neighbor country neighboring countries and and so on. Um, uh, regarding uh, hate speech, that is something uh, what what we were talking about during the the, the working groups. Um, um, also relevant for for governments and uh, for for politicians to um, contribute to processes with. Uh, um, sustaining of um, denying war crimes uh, uh, and the fact that were established before ICTY or before national courts. That is something very concrete and very possible to happen uh, when we talk about uh, transitional justice mechanisms and when we talk about peace building. If we don't have 
um, if they uh, don't believe in what was established before ICTY, before a national course, then it's very hard to expect uh, for a broader public to, to know what actually happened and then to build trust. Great, thanks, Branka. Yeah, I would, I would pass the floor to Gordon on that. I mean, we have the issue, as you probably also noticed, with, with, with uh, dissatisfaction that we have uh, newspapers, for example, in, in, in Serbia, some tabloids, when Radko Mladic's uh, um, uh, verdict was confirmed, who said that he was a hero, um, which clearly goes against the findings of the court um, by a far a, a stretch. So how can one confront these kind of hate speeches, which glorify war criminals, um, no matter where they're from, but, um, but how, can we, how can we tackle this both nationally as well as regionally in a certain way to make sure that uh, glorification of war crimes is not socially acceptable and not part of the media landscape as we still do find it in, in, in quite a number of countries in the region. Hate speech is not freedom of speech, that's obvious. But the hardest part in politics is to explain the obvious. So uh, if you read and listen to uh, that process of glorification, whoever of ours was sent to Hague is a hero, and theirs, they're the criminals. And it goes across the region. Mines are beautiful, and yours are ugly. Uh, it has nothing to do with the facts. It's on the edge where the hate speech is. And uh, unfortunately, it will take time. And uh, it requires an effort from each of us to intervene. And my interventions uh, often goes in this way. If you look at the language, whatever the language may be, Croatian, Bosniak, Montenegrin, Albanian, uh, Serbian, uh, you will see that the wordings is the same, exactly the same, for what they love to hate. And they have difference on uh, picking uh, the, the war criminals, indicted war criminals, uh, to be described uh, gloriously. Uh, that is the same. But the, the next step is, they agree in language, the same people. They agree in language when they use hate speech for Roma people, for migrants, for women. There is no a single letter of difference uh, in, 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 the, in the group of people all around the region picking uh, the, the hate speech to address the public, especially on social media or in tabloids or in what sometimes goes as harsh rhetoric between or among political parties. So I wondered uh, quite often, why do they do that? They don't gain anything. They, it, it's not, uh, it doesn't benefit for everything. And I found out that the hate speech amuses all those who, who pick it as a, as, a, as a way to communicate. And then what can you do? Same with the, with the, our, with the laws on anti-discrimination. Laws on anti-discrimination cannot ban people being biased, having prejudice uh, among someone slightly different than themselves, to negatively define the hate speech, with harassment, with whatever. But what anti-discrimination laws do are banning behavior based on your own prejudice. Mm. And we can work together, I think, uh, to find the, the, the framework, the law framework, how not to endanger freedom of speech, which hate speech is not part of, but to, to find out that we have the same haters. And the fact that they hate me and me hate them does not really make a difference. Maybe we should make a vocabulary of regional hate speech and try to ask people who like that vocabulary simple why. They will answer why not and continue to use that. And uh, I think that, that some regulations, together with the campaign in media and with the answers in social media, uh, should decrease the level uh, and, and the fuel and the, and the fire, nasty fire that they often start on, on social media or in public. I think this, these are these are excellent points. I mean, I think the challenge.
challenge, though, is, I mean, I think is, and I think comes back to Branka's point, the responsibility, of course, for this lies with governments to be very clear about what is acceptable and unacceptable speech. I mean, of course, there's the legal element, but there's also the political message. And we know, we do find, we do find that, you know, you know, including members of your government, which are quite ambiguous about talking about war criminals. Um, and, and so, so I think, you know, the, the signals has to come from governments in that sense. I mean, besides the education of the public and media, uh, the, the kind of uh, unequivocally call a, 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 a sentenced war criminal a war criminal and not to kind of uh, question this. And I think this is, this is where, where we have, which creates an atmosphere where it becomes more possible to actually, uh, for media then to, you know, interview uh, uh, people who are at the, at the ICTY who were released um, to give them, uh, a, you know, high prof public profile, a positive public profile. So I think this is really the challenge of how to make this, make this unacceptable that somebody who was sentenced uh, for uh, serious crimes cannot become a public personality in the countries um, after their release. Because again, this is the legacy of the ICTY we have now, of people who are free men and women who are not, of course, they have, it's legitimate that they are free, but it's not, it's a problem when they become heroes uh, and celebrated for the crimes they committed and for which they were sentenced. So I think there, there's, there's a lot of space there of, of governments to, to, to be more forceful and, and clearer on that. Um, I would like to ask the same question to, to Donika gabal schwartz about uh, this issue of how to deal with hate speech, because again, also, uh, this is something which is also, of course, uh, a challenge in Kosovo, and what can be done regionally to confront it, um, especially by governments? I think that the first uh, important thing is uh, building true democracies in our countries, where uh, you protect the freedom of speech, but at the same time, when you have democratic structures, when you have governments who are not corrupted, when you have govern, govern, in government people who are not criminals, and that is the first uh, and more important uh, step that uh, the countries, our region should take. We, had, uh, we have a new government in, in Kosovo and we try to be very serious about um, pro the promises we gave and uh, to install a true democracy, the results uh, will we see all together in the next uh, months and years. But uh, freedom of speech um, is not to be president of one country and to call the indictment of Ratko Mladic as something what is unjust to the Serbs because other criminals are uh, maybe not or so-called criminals or whatever. What, I, what do I want to, to say with this? Is we have to make the difference between the tabloids, the newspapers and presidents and ministers and governments when they talk about war crimes. As long as this does not happen, that uh, what you uh, mentioned, uh, Florian, that gover governments should uh, play the more important part and to make a true difference between the freedom of speech and between the hate speech against others and at the same time glorifying criminals, war criminals who committed the worst crimes uh, people can imagine. And so um, it's not just that everybody that we have are so common in the region when we talk about others, but it's very clear uh, facing the past seem for, for some of uh, our neighbors a really big challenge as, and as soon as this starts to face the part the past and take the conclusions uh, uh, not not just for themselves but for the neighbors too uh, when that happens that the region will have a real boost on democratization and on regional cooperation because that's what's missing in the moment so donica just one quick question but i if one had a regional initiative to deal with hate speech, uh, for example, I would also imagine, because this is something which Branka was talking about, maybe to have a, a regional effort to also say, let's collectively 
not talk about you know war criminals as, as heroes. Uh, this is something which Kosovo pr presumably would also be part of because again, it's the responsibility is everywhere, and I don't want to say you know uh, who is more and who is less. I mean, there is variation, but it's not only one country. It happens in several countries that uh, there is hate speech and that there is also what Gordon and I was mentioning, hate speech against minorities. Um, you know, these things happen uh, across the region. Uh, of course, across Europe, I don't want to say the region is in any way special by that. I don't want to be west explaining as Gordana was uh, uh, suggesting we should be careful about. Yes, but that's a, a global uh, problem mm. of uh, the new medias uh, that have mm. occurred. And that's something that we should take very serious. And that's something where Kosovo will take the responsibility very seriously about uh, changing that in the regional and other initiatives, but in the country themselves at the same time. But uh, this is nothing we can change in making equal all the sides in, 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 in neglecting the truth and talking about the past and the present as if we are not witnesses of what has happened. Why do I say that? Because doing uh, talking like that, that all sides are equal and everybody does that, makes uh, it uh, very different to make the changes that we need. We have to be tough, we have to be frank, and we have to put the finger on the, the wound. And as far as we don't uh, are not doing that, it will be really difficult to show to young people that uh, being uh, self uh, critic uh, to, 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 to criticize yourself is a very healthy uh, process. Because if, uh, if we tell Sorry. our youth that everything is the same, then um, it, it, it's no difference and no uh, reason to go forward. Thank you. But I think the point is really to, it always has to be from oneself or one's own society. I think these are the, these processes are always, so it doesn't help to say for outsiders to, to point fingers. I mean, we have to establish historical facts. That's important. But I think these processes of dealing uh, with confronting, it has to come from the outs from the inside, from societies themselves. But I would like to give Branka for the last four minutes a, a, sense, a, a chance to raise any final points she would like to raise to our two uh, ministers and uh, to give the two of you a chance to respond to that. Branka, please. Uh, thank you, Florian. I will be very brief. Uh, uh, when we talk about, and try to wrap it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so uh, when we talk about regional confidence, I think we, we all must be aware that laws have uh, limited power if they are not contextualized with concrete policies, uh, including non-legal measures such as uh, commemorations, truth commissions, reparations, either material or symbolic ones. I want to say um, it has to be a holistic approach which represents responsible, but uh, before everything honest will to, to reconcile in order to respect each victim, no matter the, the nationality or ethnicity. Great, thank you, thank you, Branka, for this remark. Uh, Gordon, uh, Donica, I would give each of you uh, one or two minutes uh, for your last observation, and then, unfortunately, there would be so much more need to talk about this topic, but but the time is limited. So, Gordon, uh, why don't you go ahead, and then Donica has a chance to to also state something, and then we'll wrap it up. It's up to us to decide uh, we want to go to the future or not, and it's up to us uh, to true strategy and tactics, how we can reach a common future that everybody equally dislikes or likes. That goes under the umbrella of rule of law, culture of political dialogue, culture of human minority rights, and culture of compromising. And all those issues are not dear to many hearts in the region. But I think there is a critical mass uh, of people who are devoted to, to such an approach, and there are obvious changes that already happened, whoever wants to admit or not, in each of our uh, countries and societies that give us room uh, to really, really start uh, the oriented dialogue, never forgetting the past, and taking care uh, only of the generation uh, on, on which life will really influence the decision, political one, and the government now here. And that's why I agree on the holistic approach. 
uh, we are dealing with uh, conflicts is in question. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm in. Mm. Because I don't want anyone else to do the job uh, that I think that I'm capable for. And I would like to see much more women uh, dealing with, with our context and um, having their rightful half of the future debated within the region. I think that women and young people are the resource for such a dialogue. Great. Thank you, Gordana. Donica, please. So I think reconciliation is needed in the region, but reconciliation is based on truth and on uh, future uh, pr projects. So reconciliation without uh, the truth is simply impossible. And that's why um, the people in Kosovo have decided years ago that their only way, only alternative is the way uh, in the EU, because not because of the euros, not because of the money you get from them, but because we, we share the same values, the same principles. And if we stick to these values and principles that the EU and the, the past of the EU and the present of the EU has shown us, where uh, enemies uh, are now best partners and friendly uh, countries. So uh, the, the way is for us, we know how the way is. Uh, it's 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 easy for us uh, to to go there through. But we need from everybody the readiness uh, to to be partners in the region and to be equal partners and not to to block the first step. Uh, uh, for the reconciliation would be to accept uh, the neighbors and not to put always stones on the way and to be uh, to to open the way to go as region uh, as as Balkan uh, Western Balkan region six countries in the EU and then to have our future. Okay, well, thank you very much, Donica. I would like to thank Gordon and Donica, especially for taking your time. I think the Civil Society Forum lives of the fact that government officials are willing to discuss and engage in dialogue. It's not always easy, but th thus I particularly appreciate that you took the time, you listened, and you answered, and hopefully we can continue this dialogue in a different format live somewhere. I'm running out of time. I thank Branka and also Albert who had to leave us already and all of the audience who attended and the organizers. And with this, I conclude this meeting and hopefully many other ones um, in the future. All the best to all of you. Goodbye. Thank you very much. Bye.